Uh, could The Last of Us really happen? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Lee Davis. I'm the Fungarium Collection Manager. I'm Esther Gaia, Senior Research Leader in Mycology. And we're going to be answering your questions that you sent to us about the fungus from The Last of Us. Oh, do I have to tie it? But we're not going to do the interview like this. No. No, please. <laughs> Uh, is the fungus in The Last of Us real, and mm -hmm. is it dangerous to humans? So, no, but also yes. The fungus in the actual TV series, in the computer game, is a fictional fungus that would infect humans, but it's based on real fungi that do exist, mm -hmm. that aren't dangerous to humans. If you're an insect, they're horrible, but human beings, it's fine. How many species of cordyceps are there? There's two cordyceps, if you like. There's the one which is, the, I guess, the way that in this program and other things gets talked about these sorts of um, fungi that infect insects. It's like a broad, general group. Mm -hmm. Of them, there are two families of fungi, the Cordycipitaceae and the Ophiocordycipitaceae. Uh, they're very closely related, and between the two, there's about 11, 1,200 species that we know of at the moment. So there's probably thousands more still to find and describe. Cordyceps, in the very, if you like, the, the scientific sense, is a, is a genus called the Cordyceps, and there are... About 600. But, yeah, so 600 species in that. Known. So yeah, mm. so there's the scientific use of the word cordyceps, and then there's the vernacular sense of cordyceps. Mm. Do you have any cordyceps at Kew? We do. We have hundreds, if not a couple of thousand specimens of cordyceps from the UK and the rest of the world. Um, I've got one here. This is a, a species that's called Ophiocordyceps taylori, um, and it parasitizes uh, caterpillars. So that's the caterpillar. It's been infected, it had its insides eaten out, and then when the fungus has finished, it burst out of its face, and this is the fungal fruiting body, which sticks above ground and spreads spores to infect other caterpillars. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Uh, in The Last of Us, people are infected with cordyceps if uh, they're yeah, bitten the... by an infected person, but how, does it, how do cordyceps spread in the real life? No, not through the mouth, no, that's like, not, no. Uh, Weird no. things coming yes, out, yeah. No. <laughs> that's a big uh, fictionalization. It's a lot simpler. In that the once like the like with the caterpillar, that fruiting body that's coming out the top, it produces spores which drift on the wind and then potentially go on and infect another insect. So it's kind of yeah. airborne spores, or like seeds on a dandelion, they drift on the wind and land and germinate and grow. I like the, the ones from the zombie ants. The zombie ants uh, oh, yes. when they get infected and they make them walk over up to the branches of the trees. And they can hang in there for a while while the fungus is digesting them and eating them inside. And then when they are already yeah, completely almost gone, they only have the outside, then the fungus uh, produces the spores and they, they, they uh, fall on, on the ground where you may have other uh, uh, ant colonies. And then they spread all the spores again and the cycle starts again. House flies! House flies! House flies get infected by another, an, another type of... Um, Mm, cordy well, it's the same family as these cordyceps. Dipterogena. Yes. Cordyceps dipterogena. Yes. Um, there we go. They, they get infected and they, they make them fly and then spread the wings and then shoot, all the spores go down. And the females, the females, they're very, very sophisticated. They produce these pheromones that attract males and then the males want to um, mate with those females infected. And, uh, that, and then that's how the, the males get mm, yeah, from infected as well. Is it true that with a temperature rise, it could affect people? Not these ones. These ones, uh, in particular, the ones that the people are most interested yep. because of the series, they don't like very high temperatures. And that's why they wouldn't survive in human bodies. But uh, many are the fungi that thrive in higher temperatures. And that's why, because of climate change and raising temperatures uh, around the world, we may have other fungal threats. Not the cordyceps, not the ones from the series, but, but other, other species. Yeah, it's not just the temperature that's the issue. There's, there's a couple of other things as well with these, is that they've had tens of millions of years to evolve to yeah. infect insects, and so everything about them is geared towards infecting insects. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of odd for, to them. So they're not really prepared to invade our bodies and infect us. And also we have an immune system that's pretty sophisticated. So it's, it's yeah. not just a temperature thing. We're slightly more complex than insects. Yes, we are. <laughs> um, should fungi be pronounced fungi or fungi? 
or I fungi, fungi or fungi. I say fungi. I say it's almost a matter of taste. I think they're all right. Uh, could the Last of Us really happen? Yeah. <laughs> Not with those fungi, no, as no. we said, not with those fungi, but uh, in October last year, uh, the WHO, the um, World... Um, well, yeah, the World Health Organization. Yeah, uh, published the, uh, the most, the top uh, most wanted fungi. We haven't been studying fungi enough uh, as much as, for example, bacteria or viruses, so we don't know much about them, about uh, fungi that affect humans. And we don't know enough. We don't know enough uh, how to treat them. It's going to happen. Oh, well. it, it's yeah. Yes. Not it won't be. A, it won't be a zombie apocalypse like that. It'll be a global. But yeah, it won't be this. Yeah. It will be a, a pandemic of really unpleasant fungal diseases that we can't treat. Yeah. Not what you want to hear, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm optimistic because finally they've realised that that yeah we need mm. to, we need to study fungi more and we need to understand them better. And that's partly what we do here at Q. We just try to understand how fungi are evolving. As, as scary as it is that there's got maybe potentially a very horrible pandemic of a fungal mm. disease, not a zombie causing one, the best chance of fighting it is actually other fungi because all those other fungi out there we really don't know are probably the best chance of finding antifungal compounds to combat and treat those sorts of illnesses because fungi are really, really good at making the sorts of chemicals needed to fight other fungi because they're in constant competition with each other in the environment out there. Let's do this one. Oof. No, they don't have a nervous system. So, okay. Uh, any indication of how the host would feel the infection, consciousness and pain? I, I don't think they feel that sort of pain. There is one it's not one of these cordyceps type of um, fungi that infects insects. It's a completely different type of fungus called Massospora that infects cicadas. Mm -hmm. It produces um, amphetamines and hallucinogens mm. in the cicada. And it's thought that part of the reason to do that is that the cicada doesn't yeah. care that it's having its insides eaten out while it's still mm -hmm. alive. We don't really know. Consciousness in other animals is, is a weird subject anyway. In yeah. insects, very unlikely. They probably don't care. They're probably, uh, most insects yeah. are little automata, a little biological robots, I guess. So an ant probably doesn't feel pain in the same way that a no. human would, for instance. No, we don't. Yeah, they yeah. don't have nervous system. I hope so, anyway. What's the most dangerous fungi? Fungus. What's the most dangerous fungus? Death cap. Yeah, there's the death cap, which is poisonous. The good thing is you have to eat them. You can't, most of these fungi, you can't get poisoned by touching. No. You have to eat them, so yeah. don't eat them. You just eat a little bit and wait until it dissolves your liver and <laughs> kidneys as well, I think, but mostly it goes into the liver and it's not nice because they can't do anything and it's a slow death. <sighs> how ah, do, yeah, yeah. How I does, like this question. How does the real fungus yes. not wipe out its hosts? Yes. I think we always talk bad, but uh, pathogens yeah. are there for a reason. Yeah. They are part of the ecosystem and to maintain diversity, you need different types of interactions, including pathogens of animals yeah. and humans as well. And there's a very interesting study on that that shows that, for example, especially in the in, in tropical forests, you maintain the diversity thanks to pathogens. Because if you don't, we didn't have pathogens, there would be one, two main species uh, of, of trees or plants that would be very successful and they would overgrow and you would have a much, diver, a much less diverse um, ecosystem. Pathogens maintain that diversity. It's also not in the interest of the fungi, fungus to kill exactly. all their hosts. Because it's, it's like any kind of predator-prey relationship. If you yeah. kill all of your prey, you have nothing to eat and you then die out. Okay. Uh, how much is understood about the potentially beneficial medicinal products from fungi? Uh, quite a lot. And I think people know there's a lot more potential. So we all know that antibiotics come from a fungus um, and those have changed the world. We've had the anti-rejection drugs for organ transplants. There's drugs for multiple sclerosis, yeah. um, statins come from fungi. It's interestingly, we are not that um, far related from fungi and the basic fundamental biochemistry is quite similar to humans. That's why we can use some of their, their compounds and their um, metabolites. Recently, I've got many friends asking me if all that, there's, there's this new fad um, of uh, fungi teas and lots of uh, yeah, fungi products and internet. Many of the things that are being sold, I would say they, 
they're not, they haven't been proven. So you may be spending a lot of your money on things that are kind of cool, but not very, not very uh, effective. <laughs> there was one, some guy I saw on Instagram uh, saying that it can cure ADHD in children. Uh, Rubbish. Well, yeah, schizophrenia. That's proven. The, the, the derivatives of psilocybin uh, are being used, for example, with, with uh, effectively and yeah, successfully to treat uh, schizophrenia. For example, people, individuals with bipolar um, diseases as well, depression. Yeah, those ones are not in your tea. What's the most common fungus in the UK? There are several. I mean, the most common ones, yeah. I would say the oyster fungus. Yep. Chicken of the boots. Turkey tail. All the sorts of bracket fungi are probably easy to see because they form big brackets that last on the outside of a rotting tree or a, a tree stump, whereas mm. a lot of the other fungi kind of appear for a few days and then disappear. So there are lots and lots of... Mm. Jelly ear fungus is another one. Um, What's your favourite fungus? Actually, it's the lichen. It's a lichen nice fungus. A fungus that establishes... I knew you say that. I knew. You knew. <laughs> <laughs> Establish symbiosis with algae. And because they, it can go, it can grow anywhere in the world, and there's lots of species. Uh, but I like those ones that are orange. I like the cordyceps type fungi a lot. Um, I also like amanitas; they're very beautiful. So things like the death cap and the fly garrick, I really like those sorts of fungi. It depends hey. on the day. I'll have different favourites. Hey, your favourite was the fly garrick. I remember that. Yeah, I think on that day, depending mm -hmm. on what day it is. So, uh, if there was a Last of Us style apocalypse, what would you do? I have my zombie apocalypse plan all laid out. The two options, one is I come to Kew Gardens because it's got a big wall all around it. It's got glass houses, water, and a gardening supply shop. So I could grow my own crops and live inside here quite comfortably. The fungarium is a concrete bunker underground effectively. So I could even hide out in here. If I'm not near work, then my plan is to get to an island off the coast of Wales and set up a little farm and live off the coast of Wales. That's where I'm from, so I know, I know all the Isle of Wight. There is another zombie apocalypse film where it does go on the wind called The Girl With All The Gifts, which is a very good film. Mm -hmm. Same cordyceps type stuff, but it does do spore based spore, yeah. and everyone gets killed. Yeah, there's no so. escape. You can't hide. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's kind a good of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is me? There we go. That's the last of the questions. Um, so hopefully that's answered them all for you and you're not scared of a zombie apocalypse anymore and a bit more hopeful about how fungi are amazing and that there are lots of people out there studying them and trying to understand them like we do here and that they will answer all our problems. Thank you, good night, don't have nightmares. Here we go. That's what Crime Watch did, didn't they? <laughs>